Hi, I'm Maureen Taylor, the photo detective. I really love family photographs, all of them. From the mystery images you find in shoeboxes and albums, to the pictures you snap with your digital devices, no mystery is too small. A simple question about an image can lead to new stories of your ancestors. This means you can count on me to help you identify the people in them, offer solutions for preserving and organizing them, and yes, even guide you in the various ways to gather and share picture stories with your relatives. Let's go back to fun family photos. Fun things, yes. I, know, I love what I do. I, I just do. I mean, you know, I do cause several family arguments over the identity that someone has given a photo and it's wrong. Um, and that's about as that's about as hot button as you get over here. Sure. But uh, anything else going on with you? You're looking for photographs of anyone else? <sighs> well, you know, I, I'm still basking in the glory of this one that I got last month because that's wow. the one I've looked for for 38 years. There's always somebody I'm looking for. I'm bothered by my Scandinavians that I had a great great grandmother who lived till 1902 and there's no photograph of her. It's a woman. And, yes, it's a woman. What, where is she? You know, I don't understand that. Um, and and then there's there there's some others that should be there but they are not, and I don't understand why. My my great grandfather Andrew's uh, my great grandmother who was with him. You know, my grandfather's mother. There's no photograph of her. She lived till 1899. This is a well-off family. You know. There's a battle over the estate between these two women <laughs> when he died. So it's like, well, where'd her? I'm thinking her pictures had to have been chucked with his. And it's so, possible. An awful lot of people are chucking their photos right now. Like right, right now. Now. Yes. Right now. I had dinner with uh, a woman I know last night, and we were talking about scanning for some reason. And she said, well, once I scan them, then I can just toss them. <laughs> And I was wow. like, no, I will never give you permission for that. Wow. <laughs> never. No. Never. Because no. well, you just you know, never know what's going to happen down the road. The issue we've got right now is too many pictures. You know, back in the old right. days, there were too few. And so you would keep everything, right? And then there started to be more and more through the teens and the 20s. And, you know, by the 40s, I mean, gee, my mother's albums from the 40s, lots and lots of pictures with many duplicates. Or she's standing this way, now she's standing this way. You know, it's like, well, how I'm many not. of those do you keep? You know, ultimately, because space becomes an issue and who's going to take them? You know, especially if there aren't any children or any other interested cousins, they can only go so far. They got to get scanned to get out there and then posted elsewhere, you know? Exactly. So June has a comment. She said that she was recently given a bunch of photos for her husband's family and that while they were unidentified in his family, she was able to identify uh, one, some of the people that we didn't know. Um, and that's pretty good. Well, you know, that's the key. I mean, you were asking about this long trail with these pictures here. If I had not identified the picture in Salt Lake City, then I couldn't have identified the picture in the Massachusetts antique store. Right. And I couldn't have in, uh, identified the man whose face was on the watch. And we wouldn't have known the guy on the card that we just got last month. So if you pull the string. Yeah, that's but it. If he didn't put his initials on his helmet, you would have had no way of knowing. No, 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 no. It was on the cardstock. On the cardstock. It was on there. It gave his name there. But the, 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 the name on the helmet or the initials on the helmet validated, verified it for me. So I had that second confirmation which was fantastic and then you know when you find other pictures of him on the watch and in this man's home who's a direct descendant of his you know we know thoroughly who we've got and you know this is the thing i think it's it was a lesson for me number one that you know you follow the thread as far as you can go and then hopefully there's somebody on the other side helping you <laughs> and that sometimes is what it feels like it is. And I remember driving away from this is the place Heritage Park. And my wife called, said, well, how did it go? Like, you know, what a what a waste of time that right. was going to be. And I said, well, I found him. And, you know, I couldn't believe it. It was just the, one of the most shocking discoveries I've ever had. And it still is. But the fact that led to three more photographs like this is is insane. Yeah. 
Scott, it's been great having you on as a guest. Oh. My guest today is Scott Fisher, host of Extreme Genes. I would say the most popular genealogy program out there with 700,000 listeners a month. It, I know. If now, it's you're not making your, me nervous now. It's I just, know. Well, there's 71 <laughs> radio stations that carry you across the country. It, it is true. And uh, and I thank everybody who supports the show uh, in so many different ways and reaches out. And, you know, the guests like yourself, the experts who come on and share their expertise and straighten me out when I'm off the path and whatever it may be. But it's fun. You know, I, I love the genealogy community. Because let's face it, the little tiffs that go on, like we were just talking about the DNA thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a little political thing and some people are one side, some are the other, but there are not a lot of those as compared to other fields and other interests. It's a pretty tight group of really nice people who are all doing the same thing, trying to find out who their family was and where they came from. And it's and, as simple as that. And, and there's that no like, greater heirloom than these, right? These great right, pictures. Right, now if only I knew who this little one was. Oh. <laughs> but she's she's completely, it's just who she is. Just a, just a picture, name name without, a face without a name and a Maybe no identity. Maybe some identifier. serendipity will come your way at some point. Yeah. You By never know. I want that Civil War ancestors photo. <laughs> yes, and I, we have that on my wife's side. She had a guy who was killed in the Civil War, and we don't have him or his wife. And we know from uh, a grandchild of that person that we interviewed in the 80s that there was a large picture of him at once, at one time. And we don't know what, where it is or what happened. It just it kind of drives you nuts. By the way, for uh, those of you in the Rhode Island area, there's going to be an article about pirates in the Providence, uh, was it the Journal? Providence Journal. Providence Journal, probably next week. And uh, they're going to be talking about a, a guy in your area who uh, did some research on the pirate ship that came in disguised as a slave ship. That's his theory anyway. His name is Jim Bailey. Came into uh, Newport, 1696. They talked to me about it because my seventh great grandfather was one of the pirates. <laughs> and uh, he was caught and then released because people in Newport loved the pirates and they didn't ever want to give them any trouble. That's right. Well, there are a lot of privateers here. Yeah. Oh, you're right. That was see. See, that's how they position them as privateers. It's a privateer, not a pirate. <laughs> not a pirate. Right. But uh, you ask right. the folks that they uh, that, that, that they attacked. I think they'd say they were pirates. Mm. Let's let's not go there. It's pirate. It's privateer. <laughs> <laughs> we like to put a positive spin on it. Rhode, Rhode Island Islanders, is, we Rhode live Island on the, is still like that. <laughs> we live on the water. Uh, okay, Scott, thank you so much for joining us, and all of you. Till next time. Uh, I don't have a guest scheduled yet for June, but I'm working on it. And if you have any questions about your family photographs, uh, please sign up for my newsletter on my website or Facebook page, MaureenTaylor.com, or at the Photo Detective. And don't forget to check out my courses, one on identifying photographs and one on essential photo organizing. It'll help you deal with those piles of pictures. See you next time. All right. Thank you for watching and listening. You can submit your questions for future episodes using the Ask Maureen button on MaureenTaylor.com or through any of my social media contacts. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram as The Photo Detective and on Facebook at Maureen Photo Detective. I hope you'll come back for the next show. Don't forget to send me your questions. <laughs>